Hello. In this session, I am going to discuss and solve some of the numerical problems of the concept solutions of 12th standard chemistry. Let us start from the first problem. Here it is. If 11 gram of oxalic acid are dissolved in 500 ml of solution with density 1.1 gram per ml. What is the mass percentage of oxalic acid in solution? Well, we know that the mass percentage is calculated as mass of solute by mass of solution into 100. So this is the formula to calculate. It's already given the mass of solute is 11 gram and we don't know mass of the solution but density of the solution and total volume of solution are given. So let us apply this formula density is mass by volume. So mass is equal to density into volume. Okay. Now let me consider density 1.1 gram per ml and the volume is given as 500 ml. Therefore, the mass will be 550 gram and this is the mass of solution. This is not just solvent. It is mass of solution which already has included the mass of solute. Therefore, let me substitute in the given formula here. Mass of solute is 11 gram by mass of solution just now we found it is 550 gram into 100. So, I will cancel the zeros and of course we know 55 2 times is 110. So the numerator is 110 by 55 therefore I am getting the answer 2. So the mass percentage of the solution is simply 2 or 2% 2 solution by mass. This is the answer. Let us consider the second problem. 2.46 gram of sodium hydroxide with molecular mass 40 are dissolved in water and the solution is made to 100 cm cube in a volumetric flask. Calculate the molarity of solution. Well, we know that the formula to calculate molarity is M equals W2 into 1000 by mu2 into volume. Here mu is the molecular mass. Let us substitute all the values. W2 is given as 2.46 into 1000 by the molecular mass is 40. It is given in the question already into the volume is 100 cm cube. So let us simplify this. Cancel the zeros. Of course, one more time I can cancel zeros here. This is going to be 0 0.615. So the molarity of this solution is simply 0 0.615. Okay, let us consider the problem number 3. 2.5 gram of ethanoic acid is dissolved in 75 gram of benzene. Calculate the molality of solution. Okay. It is given ethanoic acid. So I would consider CH3COOH and calculate its molecular mass. We will get 24 from carbons, 4 from hydrogens and 32 from oxygens and the total molecular mass of acetic acid becomes 60. Of course, ethanoic acid is nothing but acetic acid. Now, since the question is to calculate molality, molality is given as W2 into 1000 divided by M2 into W1. Okay. Let us substitute all the given values. Uh, W2 is mass of solute ethanoic acid which is 2.5 gram. 
into 1000 divided by the molecular mass of acetic acid is 60 just now we calculated it into W1 is 75 gram. So let us simplify this 25 threes are 75 and 25 fours are 40 times is 1000. I'll cancel one zero with uh, the zero of 60. Okay. Again, I would get two threes are six and two twos are four. And the equation is reduced to five by nine. And hence I'll get the answer 0 0.5. Five, it recurs so I'll round it up to 6 so 0 0.556 once again while writing answer uh, we could write like this molality molality can be given as 0 0.556 either this is the way of writing the answer or we could say concentration or strength of the solution is 0 0.556 m 556m will become the concentration of solution. Okay, let's take the next problem. Calculate the mole fraction of ethylene glycol in a solution containing 20% of C2H6O2, which is ethylene glycol, by mass. So it is given 20% by mass. So let us consider this uh, given data. When we say 20% of solution by mass, it actually means that 20 gram of solute is dissolved in 80 gram of water. Uh, in this particular case, when they have not mentioned any solvent, it should be water only. So, mass of ethylene glycol is 20 gram and the mass of water is 80 gram. Using this data, we have to calculate the mole fraction of ethylene glycol. Okay, let us see. Mole fraction of ethylene glycol is number of moles of ethylene glycol by total number of moles of all the components. So, I need to find out the number of moles of ethylene glycol first, which can be calculated as the given mass by molecular mass. So, given mass says 20 gram divided by ethylene glycol, if you calculate the molecular mass of this C2H6O2, we will get the total mass as 62 because the value of carbon, 2 carbon atoms is 24, hydrogen is 6 and oxygen is 32 and everything you will get it as 62. So, 20 by 62. And the ratio 20 by 62 gives you 0 0.322. Similarly, number of moles of water if I calculate, that is given as 80 gram mass divided by molecular mass of H2O is 18. So 18, when we divide 80 by 18, we get 4.444. This is the ratio. Now substitute everything in the given formula here. Number of moles of ethylene glycol is 0 0.322 divided by the total mass is 0 0.322 plus 4.444. Okay, on simplification, I would get 0 0.322 by 4.766. Okay, then simplify this ratio. We get the answer 0 0.0675 or if I round it up to the third decimal point will become 0 0.068. This is the mole fraction of ethylene glycol and if you want mole fraction of water there is a simple formula again ethylene glycol mole fraction plus eth mole fraction of water is equal to 1 use this equation and find out the mole fraction of water. Okay, let's take the next question, question number 5. Calculate the molarity of pure water and only data given is density of water is 1 gram per ml. 1 gram per ml 
actually means thousand gram in one liter. So one thousand gram in one liter indicates something very simple data here. I can easily say that one gram water is equal to one ml water. This is true only in case of water H2O. The density of water is in such a way that one gram of H2O can be equ equated to one ml of water in terms of quantity. Now let us use this data and find out the molarity. As per the knowledge, molarity can be calculated as number of moles, number of moles by volume or we have the formula W into 1000 by mu into V volume. Okay, let me consider the mass in 1000 ml that is 1 liter is 1000 gram. So 1000 gram into 1000 in the formula divided by molecular mass is 18 into volume is 1000 ml again. Okay. Or else I can take 1 and 1 in terms of uh, the mass and volume here. So in these two cases either 1000, 1000 or 1 and 1 can be taken according to the given data of density. So what finally remains is only 1000 divided by 18 which gives you the answer 55.55. So the molarity of water can be considered as 55.55. This is the answer and it's a very famous question. So please do concentrate. Here is the question number 6. Dry air contains 79% N2 and 21% O2. Determine the proportion of N2 and O2 dissolved in water at one atmospheric pressure. So we need to understand that one atmospheric pressure is the pressure of air above water. And Henry's law constants for N2 and O2 in water are given. Uh, the units are in atmosphere only, so no need to worry. We need not change the unit of pressure here in this problem. Okay, let us try to solve this. We need the proportions of N2 and O2. That is, uh, we want to find out finally what is the ratio of N2 and O2 dissolved in water at one atmospheric pressure. Okay, first let us find out what is the partial pressure of N2. Partial pressure is calculated as mole fraction into total pressure. Already it is clear that the total pressure is one atmosphere. So I will consider the fraction 79% which is 79 by 100 into the total pressure is one atmosphere. So I will get the answer 0 0.79. Similarly, partial pressure of O2 if I calculate will be 21%. So 21 by 100 into the total pressure is 1 atmosphere and then I will get the answer 0 0.21. I got the partial pressures of N2 and O2. Now let us apply the principle of Henry's law here. According to Henry's law, partial pressure is equal to constant into mole fraction. So, if I consider nitrogen, that is partial pressure of N2 will be equal to the Henry constant of N2 in water at one atmosphere into the mole fraction of nitrogen. So, the mole fraction, because we want the fraction, I'll write x of N2 is equal to partial pressure of N2 by KH. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.79 which I have calculated earlier divided by the KH value is given 8.54 into 10 power 4. Okay, this ratio gives us the answer 9.25 25 into 10 power minus 6. You can do the calculation, you get this answer. Similarly, mole fraction of O2 is equal to partial pressure of O2 which is 0 0.21 divided by the KH value is given 
in the question that is 4.56 into 10 to the power 4 atmosphere. So I get the answer the ratio as 4.60 into 10 power minus 6. So I got these two values here. One is of nitrogen and one is of oxygen. Now take the ratio. This becomes very simple. The ratio of N2 and O2 will be equal to 9.25 into 10 power minus 6 is to 4.60 into 10 power minus 6. Of course, I can cancel these 10 powers. The ratio seems to be like 2 is to 1. 9.25 is double the value of 4.60. So, the ratio of fractions is 2 is to 1. Okay, this is our next question. At 298 Kelvin, the vapor pressure of pure benzene C6H6 is 0 0.256 bar and the vapor pressure of pure tollin C6H5CH3 is 0 0.0925 bar. If the mole fraction of benzene in solution is 0 0.40, what is the total vapor pressure of the solution? So total vapor pressure we want uh, that is given as P total which will be sum of the partial pressures of benzene and tollin. Partial pressure of benzene plus partial pressure of tollin gives us total partial pressure. Well anyway, according to Raoult's law, according to Raoult's law, we know that partial pressure is product of partial, vapor pressure of pure substance and its mole fraction x. So let us apply this formula to both the uh, liquids benzene and tollin. First I will calculate the partial pressure of benzene which is equal to the pure vapor pressure of benzene is given as 0 0.256 bar into its mole fraction is given as 0 0.4. So, I would get the answer 0 0.1024 bar. This is the partial pressure of benzene. Now, let us calculate partial pressure of tollin. This is equal to 0 0.0925. This is the vapor pressure of pure tollin into the mole fraction is 0 0.6. This is not in the question, but we can understand clearly that in a mixture some of the mole fractions must be equal to 1. Benzene is 0.4. Definitely tollin must be 1 minus 0.4 which is 0 0.6. So we get this product as 0 0.0555 bar. Okay. Now the total pressure P total is equal to 0 0.1024 this is of benzene plus 0 0.0555 this is of tollin. So the sum of these two will give the answer 0 0.158 bar. So this is the total pressure vapor pressure of the mixture of benzene and tollin. A point to be noted here is the mixture benzene plus tollin mixture is an example for an ideal binary solution. Okay, so the answer is 0.158 bar. Well, these were some of the problems based on the concepts of uh, units of concentration and vapor pressure. Further, in my next video, I am going to discuss some more problems related to colligative properties and Van factor. Thank you for watching.